friends, and uh, welcome to another WSIB Truth Matters with uh, Joe Machado on this beautiful Friday afternoon. I'm sure you're all pretty excited. The weekend is right around the corner, and I am too. Uh, so anyway, I had a bit of a delay in, uh, in getting my uh, first video up on YouTube. Generally, it goes pretty smooth, but uh, I did run into some uh, issues, uh, so I got it done uh, yesterday. And I've got two more. So today is the second video of the topic of getting to know the Workplace Safety and Insurance Appeals Tribunal. And uh, I'm going to do two videos back to back today uh, to get caught up and to make sure that I get them to you so that um, you can go through it. So as I indicated in my video yesterday, the reason why I decided to cover this topic is uh, I get a lot of questions about uh, the tribunal, how it works, and I know that, um, you know, it, it can be a bit intimidating and for a lot of injured workers who haven't been to any sort of um, structured um, court system or a tribunal or even a hearing at the WSIB, which is really mostly informal. Um, it can be it can be intimidating and um, uh, and there could be a little bit of apprehension and I, I mean I, I got to know this a lot uh, with our our own clients with my paralegal firm um, and always try to put the uh, the uh, client at ease in explaining that um, it's it's uh, the tribunal uh, vice chair and, and panel members. Uh, generally very uh, friendly, uh, uh, very um, forthcoming and wanting to ensure that the claimant um, or the appellants are, you know, feel comfortable about the situation. Um, but it still doesn't um, take away all of that anxiety. And so I thought, you know, why not put out a, a series of videos that talks about the tribunal, the process involved, um, in a more informal manner uh, to just give you an idea of what to expect um, and uh, so you know that you're prepared for it but also that you know so that you know that it's really not um, a life-altering event so to speak so and I've had a lot of inquiries uh, as well uh, from viewers and subscribers about uh, the tribunal and how it works and if I could do a video on a particular subject. And I thought, well, rather than do that, why not cover um, a variety of subjects? So I did my five-part series on tribunal jurisprudence and now this one on uh, sort of getting to know the process involved with the tribunal. Uh, and there will be others where I'll get into a little bit more detail as to um, how the tribunal uh, conducts itself in behind the scenes after um, uh, a hearing has been done and while they're in the process of issuing a decision uh, because there's a, a there's a, a level of significance with that as well so anyway today's topic uh, i'm going to cover oral hearings uh, there's various formats of uh, oral hearings as i indicated in the video yesterday so I'm going to get into a little bit of a description of each one uh, and, of course, um, objections to an oral hearing um, and or a particular hearing format. Um, so there's always a, a, a way to appeal um, or object and the tribunal obviously will consider that. But I'm going to get into more detail about that in this video. So there's, uh, in the oral hearing category, there's four specific formats. There's an in-person format. Uh, there's a um, video conference format. Um, there's a telephone format. And then there's a mixed uh, format. So just to recap uh, from yesterday, uh, an in-person uh, format is usually done. Um, in one of the um, offices, um, usually one of the tribunal op <clears throat> offices throughout the province, they have 
um, their head office in Toronto, they have an office in Hamilton um, and other cities. Um, they always make an effort to ensure that the hearing is taking place as close to the appellant's uh, residence or uh, city as possible when looking at uh, deciding the location of the hearing. So uh, 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 hearing by video conference, uh, an oral hearing by video conference requires a device uh, with working webcam, a uh, desktop computer, a laptop, tablet, or a smartphone, uh, and enough internet speed to stream video and sound. And the WSIB will give the parties the information they need to connect to the, to the hearing. So generally that's done uh, with a company called Zoom. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, uh, but uh, during the pandemic, uh, Zoom gained a lot of popularity around the world um, for governments and corporations to uh, conduct their uh, off-site uh, uh, video conferencing meetings. And uh, even the court system in Ontario uh, has done that and they're still doing it. Um, so it's a very effective way to, uh, to do uh, video conferencing. Um, another uh, format is the hearing by telephone conference. And so the WISIAT may conduct an oral hearing on the telephone and the WISIAT will give the parties the information they need to connect to the hearing. Um, and in a telephone conference, there could be multiple parties on the line. Also, uh, hearings uh, can be done in writing, what they call a written appeal. Uh, some appeals will be based on written submissions. They will not have an oral hearing. In these appeals, the vice chair or panel decides the appeal. Uh, they will do this by reviewing the case material, so all of the information in the case record, uh, including written submissions from the parties. So it's important that those written submissions be um, done in a in detail, in a concise manner, uh, by numbered paragraphs, um, so that it's easy for the tribunal to follow. Um, and um, the um, and written appeals are typically uh, not as complicated as those appeals selected for a, an oral hearing. And I'm going to cover this in more detail in, uh, in tomorrow's um, video. Um, there will be mostly um, appeals in writing. Um, also, the uh, objection to one of those four uh, formats that I just covered. Uh, so if the parties uh, disagree with the hearing format chosen, they must write to the tribunal to identify their preferred format, explain the reasons why they believe the format should be changed, and include any or include why they believe oral testimony is not required. Uh, the Workplace Safety and Insurance Appeals Tribunal will review the objection. This may involve a discussion with other parties. It may also involve submissions from the other parties. So if there's an employer involved, um, then they would obviously uh, consult with the employer and obtain any uh, response submissions as to why they object to your objection to the initial uh, hearing format that was chosen by the tribunal. Um, and if the WISIAD cannot come to an arrangement with the parties on the hearing format, the objection will be sent to a vice chair for a preliminary decision, and then that decision is uh, communicated to the parties. Um, also, again, um, objections to the hearing format. The vice chair or panel assigned to, the adju to adjudicate the appeal will decide on the hearing format. If a party does not agree with the preliminary decision, they can raise it as a preliminary issue for the assigned vice chair or panel at the hearing. So this would happen um, if they decided that they were going to have a, an oral hearing um, and you were attending the hearing, it would be at that point 
that you would discuss the preliminary issue with the panel or the vice chair. Uh, if the Workplace Safety and Insurance uh, Appeals Tribunal processes the appeal for a hearing in writing, the objecting party should include with their written submissions why they believe the appeal should be determined by an oral hearing. Uh, the vice chair assigned to the appeal will consider the request for an oral hearing before considering the merits of the appeal. Uh, so that, that would be before proceeding with the actual uh, review and uh, decision. And where the vice chair agrees that an oral hearing is required, they will direct uh, Workplace Safety and Insurance Appeals Tribunal staff to prepare the appeal for an oral hearing. Where the vice chair does not agree with that, uh, that an oral hearing is required, they will decide the appeal based on the case materials. For this reason, the party, submit, uh, party submissions should be complete. So you really wanna make sure that when you submit your objection, to the hearing in writing that you have your arguments um, as to why the issue should be um, decided in your favor in the event that the vice chair of the panel decides that they're going to proceed with uh, a written uh, decision by reviewing the materials in the case record. So that pretty much covers the, uh, the four uh, hearing formats. Um, Again, it's pretty straightforward, uh, but this just gives you an idea as to what to anticipate if you're in this situation. Um, if you have a representative, lawyer, or paralegal, or a, a union uh, member, uh, or the Office of the Worker Advisor, uh, then they would know this, um, but nonetheless, I think it's good information to have to raise your confidence level when you're going into a, an appeal. So friends, uh, coming up tomorrow, it's the, uh, the third vid uh, video of this, uh, of this series. Uh, and I'm going to be going into more detail into um, appeals by written submissions. So basically, there are a number of topics that the tribunal has determined uh, would be appropriate for an appeal by written submissions. So I'm gonna get into those tomorrow and explain a little bit why um, the tribunal has picked those particular issues uh, and give you my own feedback on that as well. Uh, friends, thank you for taking the time to uh, watch this video. Uh, if you're a subscriber, I thank you for being a subscriber and for sharing my videos. Um, it really helps. Uh, my goal is to reach every single injured worker in this province, past and present, uh, to let them know that uh, um, that there is help uh, to help them with their um, uh, with their cases. Uh, as, as many of you know, I have a company, uh, WSIBSettlements.com. Um, I started this company a couple of years ago, um, putting everything together. Uh, and basically, it's, um, uh, it's based on uh, all of the experiences that uh, my paralegal firm um, had over a period of 30 years uh, dealing with the WSIB at all levels, operations division, appeals branch, workplace safety and insurance appeals tribunal. We dealt with, uh, with over 10,000 clients, we dealt with issues from relating to pre-1990 claims, Bill 162 claims, uh, that's January 1, 1990 to December 31st, 1997. And Bill 99 claims January 1, 1998 to present. Uh, we dealt with a variety of issues, uh, dealing with the various um, structures of benefits within those uh, legislations. And so um, I'm sure you can appreciate with uh, over 10,000 clients, uh, we pretty much handled everything and anything that could ever come up in a WSIB claim. Uh, so I wanna be able to impart that information um, uh, my company, um, I put together a series of tools, effective tools that work, um, and su a support system to help injured workers uh, succeed with their claims. So any issue that you may have with your claim can be handled with the tools that I've created. You know, some of the tools that I uh, created were the um, what we call um, our WSIB settlement docs. 
And these are um, documents that, are, that we've put together uh, that can address pretty much any issue that comes up in your claim, uh, from pension reassessment to chronic pain disability, psychotraumatic entitlement, uh, earnings basis recalculation, um, non-economic loss reassessment or redetermination, future economic loss, uh, presumption clause, uh, loss of earnings, um, short-term, long-term calculations, pretty much every issue that can come up from prior to 1990, um, Bill 162 and Bill 99. And so these documents, as a member, you can access um, any one of these documents with our app, uh, one of a kind. It's actually very easy to use, user-friendly. Uh, it's available for smartphone. You can also have it on your um, desktop computer. And you can access any one of those documents in less than five minutes and have it ready to be submitted directly to the WSIB in that time. Um, so I urge you to have a look at what we have at WSIBSettlements.com and perhaps you can become a member uh, and become a part of our um, group. Um, so friends, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. I'm looking forward to posting the uh, third video of this series. Uh, sometime uh, tomorrow or on Sunday, I am uh, recording it today. And, uh, and so that will conclude this series and I have a series of other videos coming up uh, this week on a wide range of topics. Uh, some of which have been requested by viewers or uh, some of our subscribers. So once again, friends, uh, friends, thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Please continue to share my videos. As always, take care.